do want to get stronger, nutrition and calories can be the main thing, right? You want to be in that surplus. And I'm going to touch on calories again now. I've said this a couple times in my most recent videos. If you're somebody who's a hard gainer, meaning it's very hard for you to put on fat. None of y'all stopping me. Don't need to ask. Chopping trees, planting seeds, planting schemes, crossing eyes, stopping T's. Lines are blurred, I cannot see. For I die, I'm top three. For I die, I'm top three. He's telling me how many reps I gotta do. Okay. Okay. What is good, YouTube? You are back with the Prez out here in Juniper Park today. Today's not gonna be another workout video where you see me training. Today I'm gonna be talking to you guys about what I believe to be the best workout split for a natural whose goal is to build muscle and increase their overall size. And remember, when I say increase their size and build muscle, I mean increase their overall body weight. Because if your goal is you wanna get cut and shredded and look lean, that's a totally different topic, totally different aspect of training, totally different goal, right? So, and there's totally two different approaches to go about each goal. Because being lean and shredded does not go hand in hand with building muscle and gaining size, right? They're on the opposite ends of the spectrum. You could look both doing both things. You could look good lean and shredded, and you could look good big and muscular, but again, they're to two totally different looks and two totally different, and two totally different goals. So before I dive into what I believe to be the best split for a natural to build muscle, first we're gonna go into what it requires to actually build muscle, right? And that's where we're gonna talk about nutrition and training, because that's gonna go hand in hand. In order to build muscle and increase your size, the first thing you have to be doing is making sure your nutrition is on point. The first thing you have to do is make sure your nutrition is on point, right? And you have to be in a calorie surplus. Calorie surplus means you're eating more calories than you're burning throughout the day. If you're not in that calorie surplus, there is no way that that scale is gonna go up. I'm not gonna say there's no way you could build muscle because there are certain instances where you could literally be in a deficit and build muscle. But that comes from people who have a lot of weight to lose. We're not talking about that, right? Because if you have a lot of weight to lose, you obviously don't want the scale to go up, right? We're talking about people who could consider themselves maybe a hard gainer or someone who just has the goal, like again, of being a bigger, stronger version of themselves. And if you're already overweight and big, you never want to be a bigger, stronger version of yourself. You just want to be a better version of yourself, right? And that's going to require you to lose weight and cut down body fat, which we're not going to be, which we're not going to be worrying about today. So, like I said, before I get into the actual split, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the nutrition training, and the nutrition and training aspect of building muscle and you know increasing the size on the scale. First things first, like I said, you gotta be in a calorie surplus. The second principle in order to build muscle is that you have to have a sound training plan. You have to be following a progressive overload approach with your resistance training. Meaning, every workout that you're going into the gym to train for, you have to have a goal of getting stronger. That's where cutting and building muscle, they're on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? Because cutting, like I said, you're gonna it's gonna be required for you to be in a calorie deficit. Bulking, gaining muscle, you gotta be in a calorie surplus. Getting stronger and stronger, workout to workout, is not gonna come when you're in a calorie deficit. That's gonna come when you're in a calorie surplus. When you have, en when you have extra energy to utilize to build that strength, to push those heavier and heavier weights, whether you're doing calisthenics, weighted calisthenics, whether you're in the gym, deadlifting, bench pressing, squatting, right? Whatever the modality of training that you're focusing on, you wanna get stronger, nutrition and calories can be the main thing, right? You wanna be in that surplus. And I'm gonna to touch on calories again now. I've said this a couple times in my most recent videos. If you're somebody who's a hard gainer, meaning it's very hard for you to put on fat, very hard for you to build muscle, that calorie surplus should be, I would say five to 600 calories over your maintenance level each day. So if your maintenance level is 3,000 calories, meaning if you want to stay the same size you are now, and your maintenance required you to eat 3,000 calories to do that, in order for you to gain size and gain muscle, if you're a hard gainer, you've got to be eating 3,500, 3,600 calories a day. Now if you're somebody who has a very easy time putting on weight, you have no struggle putting on body fat, your calorie surplus should be slightly less, about 200 to maybe 300 calories a day. Because if you're somebody who puts on weight very easily, 
we don't want to start putting on more body fat than muscle mass in our bulk, right? Because that's just going to make you look in a sloppier version of yourself. Inevitably, body fat's going to happen. It's going to accrue when we're in a surplus and building muscle. But we want to always maintain that to a minimum during the duration of the bulk, right? Because when it comes time to cut and reveal those muscles that you worked on in your bulk, you don't want to have to be in a bulk. You don't want to have to be in a cut for you know prolonged period of times, three plus months. You don't want to have to go on a drastic deficit where you're cutting out thousands of calories from your maintenance, right? That's unproductive, unsustainable. So your approach to bulking and cutting both got to be smart. You want to do it at a slow approach where you're not gaining a lot of body fat. And when it comes to cut, you just want to make sure we're cutting fat and not muscle, right? So that's where a lot of people go wrong with cutting too. They'll cut a drastic amount of calories and then they'll start burning muscle as well as body fat. And all that muscle that they worked hard to build in their bulk, it just gets thrown away during their cut, right? So make sure your nutrition is on point if the goal is to build muscle and gain weight. Like I said, if you're a hard gainer, five to 600 calories surplus daily. If you're someone who has an easy time putting on fat and you wanna minimize that, keep the surplus to about two to 300 calories above maintenance daily. So if you're someone, again, if maintenance is 3,000 calories for you and you gain a lot of weight easily, every day eat 3,200 to no more than 3,300 calories and that's gonna be a sufficient amount of calories for you to gain weight. And remember, if you wanna gain muscle, you gotta be on a sound resistance training program. And that's where the training aspect comes in. Like I said, every workout, the goal has to be to get stronger than you did previously. And stronger doesn't always mean increasing the weight. It could be increasing the reps. Like I talked to you guys about my, literally, it's talking about the simple hypertrophy rep scheme for you guys to follow for progressive overload. Day one, three sets of six. Day two, four sets of seven. Day three, five sets of eight. Once you hit five sets of eight, and it doesn't have to be on day three. Maybe you're going to fail on the five sets of eight. That's the goal, the end goal to work out for a given load. Once you can hit five sets of eight, up the weight by five to 10 pounds, drop back down to three sets of six. Once you hit the three sets of six, they hit that weight, four sets of seven, five sets of eight. Again, people that go in each workout, they're gonna go, let's say they go three sets of 10 with 50 today, then tomorrow they're gonna go to 55. Thinking on Friday, they're gonna go to 60s. You're gonna plateau like that and set yourself up for injury. It's better to maintain a weight for a few different rep scheme progressions Ensure you master that weight and then load up five to ten pounds and start the progression over. That's going to ensure, and again, if you're progressive and if each workout you're progressively getting stronger, adding one rep, adding one set, workout to workout, and you're in a calorie surplus, biologically and physically, there's no other thing to explain but this fact that you're gaining muscle. So if workout to workout, you could go from three sets of six with 50 pounds, four sets of seven with 50 pounds, five sets of eight with 50 pounds, inevitably you're getting stronger. Then you go to 55 pounds, 60 pounds, three sets of six, four sets of seven, five sets of eight. Keep building up on that scheme. As long as the load keeps going up, the reps and sets keep getting harder, you're building muscle, granted you're in that calorie surplus. So following that progressive overload routine, a strict progressive overload routine, again, is gonna be key for muscle building. And now again, when we're gonna talk about rep ranges and sets and everything and exercises, your selection of exercises has to stay consistent. You're not doing three sets of six with a bench press on Monday and then trying to do four sets of seven with a dip on Wednesday and then going five sets of eight with a bench press on Friday. There's no consistency. You pick an exercise and you get stronger at it. So whatever your main compound lifts that you want to get stronger and you pick a push, you pick a pull, you pick a squat, for instance, or a leg exercise. My progressions, weighted dips, three sets of six, weighted pulls, three sets of six, squats, three sets of six. One workout, full body, that's the split, guys. You wanna know the best split? We're getting into it right now. If you're a natural and you wanna build muscle, do not train more than four days a week. Again, if you wanna cut and get ripped and get shredded, the more you train, the more you're gonna burn, the more chances that you're gonna get ripped, right? The easier it's gonna be for you to get ripped. And it goes the same thing. The more you train, the more you burn, the harder it's gonna to be to put on size. The more you do, the more you gotta eat, the more you gotta recover, right? Recovery is the, the third most important aspect of putting on size and muscle. If you're not recovering, there's no chance for growth. Growth happens when you're not training. So again, when you're cutting and you're trying to lose fat, there's no growth happening. You're just revealing what we worked hard for. You're losing fat and you're becoming a smaller version, a leaner version of yourself, right? There's no growth technically happening because now the scale's going from 185 pound version of you to now 175 pounds of you. That is a loss, you're getting smaller. Even though you're gonna be you know, shredded and look better, you're getting smaller. The weight's not getting higher, you're not growing. In order to grow, you gotta be recovering sufficiently. 
And if you're a natural, you cannot handle training more than four days a week. It's inevitable. Listen, like I said, if you're pushing yourself correctly with full body workouts, so I would literally, my go-to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, full body workouts. But some days, a full body workout might take too long. So I would do, let's just say Monday upper, Tuesday lower, Wednesday back to full body, Thursday rest, Friday full body. So we're still getting two full body workouts in and an upper and a lower. We're still hitting everything three times a week. Dips three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, squatting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, pulling Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And that could be any exercise. You guys could overhead press, you guys could bench press, you guys could deadlift, you guys could squat. Doesn't matter what exercise you're choosing. You do them day in and day out for a set amount of time and get stronger at those exercises. We don't need to have a big selection of exercises in our toolbox because again, if you're constantly changing the exercise modality, the exercise variation, how can you track progress on it? You can't. The only way to track progress is to have consistency. So consistency with the workouts, consistency with the exercises that you're choosing, all that is super key to in order for you to consistently build muscle and gain weight on that scale. Changing the exercises every day, again, is gonna have, is gonna leave no room for measurable progress. You might be able to, you know, you can still get a stimulus, you can still fall in that three to six rep range, or that, you know, six to eight rep range, regardless of the exercise you choose. But for measurable success and measurable progress for you to see, the exercise selection has to stay pretty much the same. And it doesn't have to stay the same forever. You stay three or four weeks doing the same exercises day in and day out, and then you can switch it up. So if you're doing dips for three to four weeks, work on those rep schemes. Three by six, four by seven, five by eight, week one. Week two, up the weight. Three by six, four by seven, five by eight. Week three, three by six, four by seven, five by eight. Week four, do it again. Week five, you don't want to do dips no more. All right, let's go to bench press. Let's go to an overhead press instead, right? Another pressing variation that you want to now incorporate into your training. But again, the rep schemes and the sets and reps, they stay the same for that exercise now and you work on that exercise for an X amount of time. And then guys, after you know a three or four month period of bulking, you're putting on 10, 15 pounds of muscle, maybe you know five to six pounds of body fat. Now you bulk through that winter, springtime comes around, it's time to cut, we start lowering the calories and we do it smart again. Slight deficits, week in and week out, focusing on just losing body fat, not shredding away the muscle that we built during our bulk. So like I said, if you guys are a natural and you guys want to build muscle, gain weight on the scale, in my opinion, three days a week, full body, no more than four days a week, total training throughout a seven day period. Because again, recovery is when you grow. Your muscles aren't gonna grow when you're training, right? Because when you're training, you're actually breaking down your muscles. You could come into a workout, chest is looking pumped. You might look pumped after workout and bigger, but all you did was cause damage. You're causing tears in the muscles. You're pulling them apart. And in order for them to grow back bigger and stronger, they can't be worked again right away. They have to have time and a sufficient amount of time for recovery. But if you follow that three day a week, training on Monday, training on Wednesday, training on Friday, it could be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. It could be Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. As long as it's not training dips on Monday, training dips on Tuesday, training dips on Wednesday, training dips on Thursday, training dips on Friday. As long as there's a break period in between the workouts, Monday dips, nothing on Tuesday. Wednesday dips, nothing on Thursday. Friday dips, nothing on fr nothing on Saturday, Sunday. All those days where you're not doing nothing, not touching those muscle groups, that's when they grow. And that's where you could also get that little bit of room or wiggle room to switch up your routine. And so instead of it being full body Monday, full body Wednesday, full body Friday, which gives you three opportunities to hit each muscle group, which is ideal because the consistency and the frequency of training is very high, you can do more of Monday upper, Tuesday lower. Wednesday upper, but you don't wanna go Thursday lower because now you're on that four day a week already training split, right? Then you have to go back to Friday upper and now you're hitting over, that, that volume is too high for the week. Five days of training, not enough time for recovery, right? So you could get a little wiggle room with a four day split where it's full body mon upper Monday, lower Tuesday. Back to upper on Wednesday or full body Wednesday, doing different exercises for your lower body than you did on Tuesday. Thursday rest, Friday back to full body. So there is some wiggle room, but like I said, I would keep the training days to no more than four days per week if you're a natural. And I'm emphasizing natural because again, if you're enhanced and taking drugs, that volume and the recoverability that your body's gonna have is greatly gonna be enhanced, right? So you can start handling those higher rep workouts where you're hitting thousands of reps 
you're not gonna have to worry about such a burn because your body's gonna be in that anabolic window all the time due to the fact that you're now taking performance enhancing drugs, right? But when you're a natural, remember, working out is a stress on the body. It raises cortisol levels. If cortisol is high in the body, you cannot build muscle. Taking steroids naturally can control that cortisol levels, right? And it'll keep you more in that anabolic state. Anabolism and cortisol, opposite ends of the spectrum. If you're anabolic, the cortisol levels are low. If your cortisol levels are high, you got no anabolicness running through the body, right? So learn about, learn how to manage stress and intensity when you're training, right? Those are all key principles. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about now is the rep ranges. Because I told you many times, you can build muscle and rep ranges from five to up to 30 reps, right? Studies show even up to 50 reps, right? Like I said, you see prisoners or people in jail, even calisthenic guys like myself, doing those high rep workouts, 500 rep push-up workouts, they're gonna induce growth. But those routines are also gonna induce a lot of burn, a lot of calorie burn, right? A lot of demand for more calories. So my recommendation, the ideal rep ranges for someone who's trying to build muscle, gain weight on the scale as a natural, keep the reps in that three low end to no more than 12. Because you can even go as high as 15 on some exercises like push-ups or the easier variations, the isolation movements if you're incorporating them. As long as they're under control, slow and controlled with time under tension, focusing on that muscle and that you know mind-muscle connection for those isolation movements. But the main compounds, three to no more than 12 reps because Again, the higher reps you're doing, the intensity is gonna be lower, meaning the load's gonna be lower, and the burn is gonna be higher. We're not trying to induce a crazy burn in our body and burn a lot of calories when the goal is to put on weight and gain weight on the scale. They're, con they're counterproductive to each other. Again, it could be done. You could do five sets of 30 dips and still gain muscle and still gain weight, but it's gonna require a lot more nutrition and a lot more recovery then instead of, you know, five sets of 10 or something like that, you know what I'm saying? The volume is gonna be a lot lower compared to five sets of 30, five sets of 10. So a lot less recoverability is gonna be needed. And again, in order, if you're doing more, you're gonna need more. If you're doing more work, you're gonna need more recovery, more calories. So I hope this video didn't get, you know, too crazy for you guys, didn't like go too around the world with this. Hopefully I kept it, you know, pretty basic and understandable for you guys but like always guys if you have a question or comment leave it in the comment section i always get back to you guys hope you guys enjoyed this video like the video helps youtube share it with the youtube world helps the algorithm out share the video with your friends and your family if you're not subscribed yet smash that subscribe button let's keep this channel growing and like always guys peace out bar naturals Sad story, I ain't here for a symphony, no sympathy When I was on the bench, you wouldn't sit with me Now I'm on the court and I'm ballin', my time's coming